first of all, we're gonna set up a quick project with um, just a little particle in the center. So that's just a little circle that we drew. It could be anything, but we're probably gonna want something small. Next, we're gonna just delete the default variable. We won't be needing that. And then we're gonna go and create a clone. Now, this will help us create the particles, but from here, we need to make an SX variable. And this variable needs to be for the sprite only, because that's the type of variable that performs only for that clone. So now we go back and we make an SY variable, and then we go and make um, a custom block to clone our um, particle. And this this will be in the forever loop, along with um, a tick broadcast. And why we need the tick broadcast is it acts like a forever loop, but it reduces lag. And if you have 200 particles, you're going to have a lot more lag. So all we do is spawn particle x, y, and that's, um, that's how I'm going to write it. I'm just doing some fancy formatting. And then right here, we're going to go on y and run without screen refresh. And all you need to do is in this custom block, you hit go to x, y. And this is because um, clones save their parent object's um, position and other effects. So when you clone it, it will go to that same position. No need to worry about that. And then right here, we're doing what would go in, normally go inside the forever loop. So change x by sx, change y by sy. So right now, as you can see, there's a little strand of particles. That's because they're spawning in the same place, not no effects, and they're all spawning every frame. So it looks like a line. So if we've changed the position, and then add a randomizer onto, um, if we add them to the SX, then it'll do that. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a position changer, so we added onto that block right there. So as we can see now, it looks sort of like bubbles. But mostly bubbles or whatever thing you have kind of fade away. So we're going to change the ghost effect by uh, 2 every frame, I think. Tends too fast. So... First, we're gonna create a clone called um, is clo um, is clone, and this is because when we don't want the parent object to be getting into a um, a low ghost effect, we only want the particles to. And since it saves the variable values too, you can detect if something's a clone or not. So if the clone equals one, which would mean it's um, a clone, then we do that effect. Otherwise, we do nothing. So now, as we can see, it fades really fast. But if we change it to two, it'll be a more appropriate effect. So as we can see, now it does that. But as you saw, it stopped after a little while. This is because of a problem with the clone limit. As you might have noticed we're not deleting the clones once we finish, once they you can't see them anymore. And that's something we must do. So we can um, detect something, just, just um, run a certain amount of loops and then stop and then delete it itself. So right now it would take 50 loops of this to cause it to um, um, be transparent enough to easily be, be deleted. So essentially what we're going to do is if we're going to set this, see when this variable is less or greater than 100, 50 sorry, because we're changing the ghost effect by 2. 
So once it's greater than 50, then we can delete the clone, and then it'll, we can reuse old clones, so we uh, can have the new. So now, if you have this code, the particles will go on forever. So, use this one how you want. I find it's very useful for um, maybe a bubble effect or a mist effect from lava.